We're we'll starting with an extremely interesting company, and that's called AIG. The full name of the business is American International Group. It was founded in uh, Hong Kong, or actually in Shanghai, in China, but it brought itself back to the United States of America. It was founded by a guy called Van der Star. That was his surname, and it is now really a large corporate player. But the more important thing to tell you is that this business had a just about near death experience in 2008, 2009. It basically wiped itself out. It was recapitalized by the US government to the tune of $185 billion of guarantees and other value that was injected. But it's now back in business. It's got, you know, uh, a pulse and it also has a market cap of $64 billion. So it's not just back in business, it's now a global player again. I mean, its business always was, but it nearly basically wiped itself out. It still has no positive price to earnings ratio, which may just be due to write backs and write offs and that kind of thing. But it is paying dividends again as a systemically important US government uh, monitored business. It's now able at least to pay yeah. dividends. So what have I missed out? I mean, a very checkered, and, and tell us why it almost died. Well, back. it had so many derivative covers and it was so yeah. heavily geared that yeah. when the financial crisis hit and liquidity dried up, it literally, it would have gone totally bankrupt. So it was writing insurance policies for those collateralized debt obligations, Correct. those mortgage-backed securities. It was basically putting its triple A stamp well, what, on them. Well, what, what, what you would do was, you would go and find investors with a hundred million dollars. Yeah. You would gear that up double. You would then buy mortgage-backed securities with a credit underwrite against those mortgage-backed securities in case they went down. And, and AIG, AIG was thoughts, involved in that. Look, there's no problem. No, we, everything was triple A. Of, everything yeah. was triple A. Everything was well diversified. The bottom line was no one thought the housing market would ever collapse. And mm. of course it did. Mm. And the moment it collapsed and you got levels and levels of gearing above the actual value of the mortgage, yeah. it just, it's literally a pack of cards, a house of cards, just it just collapses in <laughs> front of your eyes times 10. Well, let's look at the share chart because unfortunately we only ever go back five years. So that looks like a good one. Wow, you could have bought them recovered. then and look how nicely it's done and it's back at $60. But it's all time high in 2007 before the crisis was at the effective equivalent of over $2,000. Yeah. And it basically went from 2000 to 10. And then the US government stepped in, basically bought its shares, guaranteed its obligations in order to prevent well, a financial to. meltdown. Yes. And then it is offloaded. So the US government actually made like a $22 billion profit on they those shares in the profit. It's now back in the market. Okay, anyway, that's all becoming like a history lesson. The question is, should one buy these things look, now? Look, the past is the past. Every financial institution yeah. has learned lessons from it. You know, maybe some have learned lessons better than the other ones. But this company is actually doing quite well. I mean, they're planning a $3 billion stock buyback. Mm -hmm. The earnings look quite stable. The net asset value of the company is quite good. The gearing level is not high. And they're still it's a major, major global oh yes, player totally. in what they call property and casualty insurance yeah. and also so they business write risk. risk. They write risk. So, for example, as an FSB uh, approved asset manager, yeah. Best Act has to have insurance. like a million rands worth of private indemnity insurance. Yeah. Who writes that? AIG does. They, they write that. Around the world, that's their major player. But in they're, that also, sort of they're also in the short term, they in casualty, they in, they in virtually Retirement everything. Retirement annuities yeah. I see here as well, life, yeah. personal insurance, mortgage guarantee, they still active in somehow yeah. or another institutional but look, markets. They're massive, massive players. And, you know, 2008, the U.S. government had to come in because this yeah. would have been more calamitous than yeah, Lehman sure. Brothers. There's no doubt about that. But they're in, a, they're in, quite frankly, a very healthy position where they stand now. And presumably they've got a deep memory now of yeah. all the dramas that yeah. went on, so they're not likely to commit look, it's highly, the it's same it's highly unlikely for something that, like that to happen for a number of decades because the people who experienced it have got to <laughs> literally die first before, before you become susceptible forget. to that to that sort of shock in the system again. And that is again. definitely the case, because yep. we know that there would have been definitely. crisis back in the 30s and 40s and 50s, which eventually people kind of unlearned and yep. then they went forward. Okay, so you likely I'll go, go hot on this one, yes, I think so. Look, I'm a bit befuzzled about the fact that it has no positive price to earnings ratio and so on, so I'm going to lean not hot on AIG, but that's an interesting conversation nonetheless.